Hey guys, I've got another video for my IT students in which I'm going to demonstrate how to install WordPress on Debian Linux on a Google Cloud virtual machine. Now what you're going to need for this tutorial is PuTTY or another SSH client and WinSCP or another SFTP client. Now you don't necessarily need WinSCP if you're comfortable working in the command prompt but I'm going to use the graphical interface to modify some files after I do the install and WinSCP is very easy to do this with. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to switch over to my SSH client and here I'm going to run a couple of commands to download and install the WordPress source code. The first thing we need to do though is to figure out exactly where we would like to install WordPress. Now we know that all our web files need to go into the var www html folder. The question is, is where would you like them? Now I'm going to put it into a folder called WordPress under the html folder. If you'd like it in another folder such as blog or uh, my WordPress site or something like that, then you'll need to do one additional step. But let's go ahead and get started by changing directory to var www html. Now once we're in this folder, you can see that I've got the files out there from our last uh, web module lab that we had and nothing else. So what we're going to do is we're going to download the WordPress source code right from the WordPress website. Now all these commands that I'm going to execute will be listed below in the description of the video. That way you can copy and paste them and not have to try and figure out you know, what you're seeing on the screen. So we're going to run the wget command, which is a web get, and it's going to download that latest version of the source code from WordPress. Now it comes down as a zip file, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to unzip it using this tar command. And the tar command extracts and unzips the file that we just downloaded. Quite a bit of files get extracted into a WordPress folder. And if we run our ls command again, you'll see we now have a WordPress folder in our HTML folder. Now this is the point at which if you want it in a different folder, we'll use the move command to move WordPress to whatever new name you would like to give it. So for example, if you'd prefer to have it under blog or my blog or something like that, this is where you'd run this command. Now I'm not going to do it because I would like mine under the WordPress folder. You'll also notice that I downloaded it as myself. So the owner of this file is currently R. Thaxton as opposed to the www-data user, which is the user that actually operates the website on the server. So what we need to do is we need to change ownership of that uh, folder. And in fact, we're going to run a command which will basically change ownership of everything in the web folder. We preface it with sudo, followed by change owner or chown. We recursively change every file in the var www folder to be owned by www-data as both the group and user. We run that command, there's no output, so that means it ran successfully. We're going to go ahead and then change the file permissions on this file, which is changed with the change mode or schmod command. Again, we preface it with sudo. We recursively do it to every file in the var www folder. And what we're doing is we're giving write access to the group and any member of the group to that folder. We run it and no output means it ran successfully. If I type ls again, we see that now www-data owns everything and they have set up permissions to write to those files. So that way we can manage and modify our WordPress site as needed. Now, if you would like to add an additional layer of security to WordPress, you can make it so that the group does not have the right to write to files in the WordPress folder. And that would improve the security on the WordPress site, but there is a subfolder of WordPress that you would need to grant write access to, 
and that subfolder is wp-content. More information about that can be found on the wordpress.org website in the documentation. For the purposes of this lab, I'm just going to go ahead and leave that open. Now that we've downloaded the source code and set up the website, we're going to need to create a database to store the data for our content management system. We'll go ahead and launch MySQL using sudo mysql-u root, which will take us into the MySQL or MariaDB console. Here, we need to create a database specifically for the blog. We'll call this database WordPress and we'll use the create database command to do that. Next, we'll create a user for the WordPress application and just for simplicity, I'll use the same uh, username as the database. So it will be WordPress and it will be WordPress at localhost, which means you have to be logged into this computer to actually use the WordPress user to access the database. Identified by my super secret or super secure WordPress password is basically where you set the password for this user. And I expect you'll choose a good password, preferably not the one I'm using in this demo. So I'll go ahead and press enter. That successfully executes. Next, we're going to give the WordPress user permissions to do things. Right, off, right now, we have a WordPress database and a WordPress user, but the WordPress user does not have the rights to do anything. So we'll run the grant command and we'll grant five permissions. The first permission is select, the next is insert, the third is update, fourth is delete. Those allow you to basically create, read, update, and delete data. The last permission is the create command, which allows the WordPress user to create tables, which it will need to do. Now, after WordPress is set up, you may be able to remove the create permission, and that will create a more secure environment for your WordPress uh, site. However, certain plugins may require the work may require the WordPress user to have create permissions, in which case you may have to go back and add it in later. So for high security, you might want to take that away. For the purposes of, purposes of this lab, we'll just go ahead and leave it. And you'll see we're granting these permissions to WordPress at localhost. So I run that, it works just fine. I'll go ahead and exit out of the MySQL console. And now what we need to do is modify our WordPress configuration. By default, WordPress does not know the username you're gonna use, nor does it know your password. So we're gonna go into a file and add those values. Here's where I'm gonna jump over to WinSCP. So if I go to WinSCP, refresh the page, you'll see that there's now a WordPress folder. Going into there, I can locate a WP config. Let me refresh the page. Going into here, we can locate a WP config sample.php file. We need to rename this because we don't want the sample file, we want the actual config file. So a slow double click will allow us to rename the file, or you can right click and select rename, and we're taking out the dash sample. So our file name becomes wp-config. Now if we right click and edit, it will open up, in my case, it opens up in Notepad++. On your computer, it may open up in the WinSCP editor or in Notepad. Either way, they're all the same. What we're gonna do is scroll down to lines 21 through 35. And here's where the database is being configured. We change database name here to be our database name, which is WordPress. We change the user to WordPress. And we change the database password to that super secret password we have, which I'm going to copy right out of PuTTY. Whenever you highlight something in PuTTY, it goes ahead and copies it to the clipboard. So I highlight it, I come back, and I paste in my super secret password. 
which of course I'm going to change as soon as this video is over. The database host stays at local host because the database is running on the same computer as our WordPress installation. If our WordPress website was running on a different computer, then we would need to tell it what the name of the database computer is. If you scroll down a little further, you'll notice a section uh, with a bunch of define directives, lines 49 through 56 on my screen. Here is where you would put in uh, unique phrases for your website that you're not going to share with anybody. So you would just come in here and put in either some gibberish or some unique phrase and then just not worry about it after that. This is to improve the security on your website and you can read more about that on the wordpress.org website. We're just going to leave those for this lab at their default values. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and then I'm going to go back to my web browser and here in the web browser we have the web page in our root directory that we used for our last lab. Our WordPress install is in a folder called WordPress. So we're going to go to our URL and we're going to add slash WordPress to the end of our URL and pressing enter will bring up the WordPress installation script. At this point we just follow the prompts. It asks us for our language, we select English and hit continue. It asks us for the title of our site. I'm going to set this to my name. For the username, this is the username we are going to use to log into the website uh, to make changes to the content. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my name as the username. For the password, I'll put in something like my super secret password. This is something you want to be very secure. You do not want something that someone can guess and use to take over your website. So we'll choose a very secure password here. We'll go to the email box and put in our email address, which will be useful for resetting our password if we ever need to. Lastly, we'll click install WordPress and you should get this success message at the end. If you get any other messages, you may not have set the permissions correctly on your file folder, or you may not have set the database connection properties correctly. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just test our login by going to the login page and putting in our username and our super secret password. And ta-da, we have now installed WordPress. Well, that wraps up this tutorial. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments, or if you're one of my students, go ahead and send me an email.